Hello, and thank you for joining us. Today's webinar is Fast Analysis for Mining, Malik 3, and EPA 200.7. Our presenter today is Jacob Harrington, Technical Product Manager for Teledyne SeaTac. We will be taking questions, so feel free to submit your questions throughout the presentation using the question feature, and we will address them at the end. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for viewing within a couple of days. You will receive an email notification once it's available. Now I'll turn it over to our presenter, Jacob Harrington. All right, Shelley, thank you for that introduction. Um, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to attend today. Uh, I hope that you find it beneficial. We'll be talking about uh, how we can improve your analysis uh, throughput uh, on these very specific applications. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today uh, is the ACE Express Plus, and we'll do a little bit of an overview of the system before we dive into the data. So what this is, it's an accessory uh, for ICP optical and ICP MS systems that enables faster sample uptake times and eliminates the rinse times to allow more samples to be analyzed each day or each shift. Um, the Express has its own standalone, uh, very small, light software, um, which is separate from the instrument that specifies its operating conditions. Uh, and typically, the method development time to get this installed and running is uh, is fairly minimal. Um, what we normally ask is that you'd have sort of your standard operating parameters. We want to walk into the lab and, and know that you're already getting quality data. Um, and then with the AS Express Plus, we can simply speed up your analysis time while we maintain the, the quality of the data already in place. So here you see the AS Express Plus, and it has two components. So on the left, uh, it's kind of the workhorse of it. That's our valve pump module. You can see it's actually fairly small. Um, and the idea with that is that it will set sit as close to the nebulizer as possible to minimize the flow path into the nebulizer. And what this is, it contains a metal-free multi-port valve. You can see the sample loop attached there. Um, and it also contains an inert high-speed liquid pump. So what it does is it uses the pump to very quickly load your sample uh, from the auto sampler into the sample loop. Uh, and then it's introduced to the ICP, more like you would introduce an aliquota sample uh, in things like GC or HPLC, where you have a fixed volume. So. This valve allows, it separates the, essentially the nebulizer from the auto sampler, um, which allows for both simultaneous, for simultaneous analysis and rinsing of the sample probe, which improves your sample throughput because then you don't have to wait um, to rinse out the system between each. Um, and it introduces or improves your uptake time because rather than having your peristaltic pump drive your sample or pull your sample from the tip of the probe all the way through to the nebulizer, what we're using is this fast pump to very quickly pull the sample close to the nebulizer, and then we still use the onboard peristaltic pump for the ICP to introduce the sample. So that's still controlled by your ICP software, and so your sample introduction remains the same. On the right, we have the electronics module, um, and what this is kind of the brains of the operation. It handles all communication between the computer and the auto sampler, um, and the valve pump module gets everything in sync. Um, it's programmable to meet the, meet the needs of the application. And we say that it's invisible to the ICP software, um, which means that the ICP software doesn't know the AS Express Plus has been added. There's no plug-in to or update or anything like that. You have to do your ICP software. If it can speak to our auto samplers, then the AS Express Plus is simply inserted in between and kind of acts as a go-between to uh, improve your, your sample throughput. Here we have a short video. Uh, that shows how this whole process works. So you can see the sample being loaded in. Uh, the green there, what that is, is it's uh, the pump is pulling it in very quickly. It's actually a lot faster than that in real life. And then now you can see we've got two different solutions there, the red and the blue. Those are both rinse solutions. We separated them out because you can see the carrier uh, and then your rinse from the probe. So as the sample is being pushed into the nebulizer for analysis, everything else is being rinsed out of the system and that allows it to very quickly proceed from one sample to the next without having to wait for um, time-consuming rinsing. So now that we've had a 
bit of an overview of how the system works. Uh, I want to dive into uh, the applications we're going to be talking about specifically today. So uh, we'll talk about three different applications that have really very different requirements and how the Express Plus helps to facilitate each of those different applications. So the first one is mining, um, the, where clients require superior accuracy. The accuracy and precision is critical uh, for these samples and customers. Um, we're going to talk about soils a bit, specifically Malik 3, um, but soils labs in general where speed is uh, critical as the, the absolute most important. Um, and then EPA 200.7, where you have to kind of balance your speed and your accuracy because, of course, it's highly regulated. We have to make sure that your checks and uh, all pass but at the same time. Uh, you frequently have a fairly high sample load that you want to get through. So this is just a preview. Um, we're going to, again, go into more detail on each of these, but wanted to give kind of an overview of the three different methods side by side in terms of the time per sample. So what you see here, the blue lines, that's our, our standard analysis. Typically, the standard analysis was taken from um, an ICP manufacturer kind of as their default beginning method um, to get people up and running, be able to get good data quickly. So um, you can see that the the standard methods themselves vary from 30 seconds of sample to over 250 seconds of sample, uh, depending on you know number of replicates, number of analytes, uh, and what kind of uh, detection levels you're looking at. But what you can also see is, of course, with the AS Express Plus, we have the orange lines, um, and it's significantly lower on all of those. And one thing you'll notice, especially the Malik, I know it doesn't look terribly drastic, but it's actually still about a 30% savings. Uh, and when you're starting with um, so much lower of a sample to sample time, uh, that difference really makes uh, is a, very impactful for the laboratory. So first we're gonna go into the mining industry a bit. So we, we in preparing to do the application work here, we spoke with a number of different laboratories regarding their QC requirements, uh, RSC requirements, digestions. Um, we found that there was no promulgated method that didn't, you know, adhere to a specific way of running things. So some of the labs had 10% QC, others had 5%. Uh, some of the labs needed less than 1% RSCs for samples and all elements, some of them didn't. Um, and frequently uh, the digestions were very high. Uh, some of them were as high as the final con acid concentration as high as 45%. Um, and frequently using things like aqua regia um, that can be kind of difficult to work with. Um, so we know that, that the high acid can, content can affect sample transport. Um, this sort of a uh, difficult matrix can cause instrument drift over time. Um, and especially for labs where they're looking at samples that samples can be very limited um, and the accuracy is important because it can uh, really affect the value of the samples or of the metals themselves. Uh, so, you know, we wanted to focus on that, but given that there wasn't a like specific methodology to follow, we really wanted to show with this, was wanted to demonstrate that with or without the Express Plus, you can get a similar quality data, uh, but be able to do it in a much smaller amount of time. So let's start by going through just what we've changed the instrument settings. So in the top right, you can see there um, our standard run settings and our settings for the AS Express in the uh, ICP software. Well, you'll notice uh, the standard run, we had 30 second read delay with a 30 second flush time. So that's 60 seconds for your sample introduction essentially. Um, and then a 30 second rinse time between each sample. So you've got 90 seconds there of time per sample when you're not actually analyzing. Uh, and you can see in the bottom left, the time, the total time per sample is only 112 seconds. So, um, you know, a very large percentage of the time per sample on this was non-analysis or non-essential time. It's time when your ICP is actually kind of sitting dormant, letting rinse and, and other solutions flow through it, not analyzing. Um, and one of the things that we want to do with the AS Express Plus is help to improve the operational efficiency of the ICP, help customers to get more out of the investment that they've already made. So with the Express, we're able to reduce the read delay to 14 seconds. We're able to remove the flush time and speed entirely, um, which actually having a single pump speed for the entire run really helps because then you don't have to worry about 
um, changing volumes going through your nebulizer and spray chamber, and you can get better stability. Um, and then we also removed the rinse time entirely because the AS Express Plus rinses as it runs. Uh, and this resulted in a time savings of 70% per sample, which is a 3.4 times improvement in sample throughput for this analysis. So we talked about how we made it faster. Uh, let's talk about the data itself. So what we did is we were able to get um, from a company that specializes in mining standard reference materials. Uh, we're able to get this Aureus 45F. Um, and you can see on the right the certified values for this um, and the confidence and tolerance limits. One thing I want to point out is uh, in that list of elements, some of them are in parts per million, some of them are in weight percent. Um, particularly of note is the iron weight percent, which is 13% by weight, um, which is uh, it's a lot of iron to try and get uh, digested out. So what we did is we took that sample, we digested it um, 100x uh, with a final acid content of 24% aqua regia. You can see the digestion there, uh, 0.5 grams uh, to or into an initial digestion, 9 mils hydrochloric, 3 mils nitric. That was heated for two hours, and then we filled to a final volume of 50 mil. Uh, so that's how we prepared the samples for analysis. And then we ran those samples. Um, we prepared them essentially 10x, uh, and then we ran them to look at the uh, average recoveries, which is on the right, and the RSCs, which is on the left. So starting with the RSCs, you can see, again, the AS Express Plus here is the blue. Our standard run is green. Um, and what you see is that generally the AS Express Plus uh, is actually producing better RSDs than the standard run, uh, even with that very impressive reduction in time per sample, or it's you know kind of within error bars. Like you can see on Scandium, the AS, AS Express Plus is a tiny bit higher, but they're more or less the same. So um, the RSDs we look really good at the Express. Um, it is equal to or better than what we're getting with the standard method. And then our recoveries, um, again, we had the express with the standard run. For all of those, the average recovery um, with the AS Express Plus is 102%. Uh, with the standard method, it was 105%. So we're able to get slightly better recoveries and better RSDs um, with the additional time savings. In addition to, to running the samples, we also ran uh, second source recovery. Um, so here's the data, and what you have here is the, the AS Express Plus, as in the blue and the orange, that's before and after uh, the 10 Aureus samples. Uh, and then we also compare this, the gray and yellow are our standard runs. So for the recoveries, AS Express Plus, everything came in within 5%, uh, whereas the standard run was within 10%. So uh, again, slightly better, tighter data um, with the AS Express Plus valve. Um, and things that can account for that uh, is that, especially for some mining samples or high TDS, high acid samples, one of the things the AS Express Plus has to its advantage is that your sample no longer travels through the peristaltic pump tubing. Uh, and for difficult matrices, this can make a big difference in the quality of your analysis uh, because you're getting, you're avoiding a source of contamination carryover and buildup um, in your, your sample run in that the sample is pulled directly to the loop and then delivered through PTFE. So um, from the tip of the probe all the way in, it only touches PTFE and then the valve itself is made of PPS, both of which are very clean materials and it never comes under any sort of compression like it would in the peristaltic pump tubing. So, Within this methodology, we're able to improve the throughput while maintaining the accuracy, and that was our goal. Uh, samples we know can be challenging with high acid content, high TDS. The methods uh, due to the lack of a promulgated method um, and the requirements of each specific laboratory's methods have to be tailored to meet the needs of the individual lab, um, which can be difficult for um, an ICT manufacturer to meet, um, but this is one of the options that you have to really improve and optimize your methodology. And we understand that accuracy is key. So uh, the AS Express Plus, it maintained or improved the data quality. Um, the RSDs were consistent with their standard analysis. Our washout is better uh, because of, uh, because of uh, washing during uh, the analysis. Um, and also because we actually, our, our carrier solution has um, air bubbles 
built into the carrier solution via what we call a passive bubbler or, or active bubbler. Um, those air bubbles create a constantly changing surface tension as it goes through the tubing, and that really helps to scrub out the lines and do it very quickly. And because of the improvement in sample throughput, the instrument drift is minimized even with uh, these kind of high acid samples. So the, the time per sample is reduced by 70%. That means across an eight hour shift, um, the standard method would allow for 257 samples with the ACE Express Plus uh, that bumps to 872 samples. Now, obviously, that's not that's a theoretical laboratory that doesn't have to allow for uh, instrument warm-up times and um, people to use the bathroom and take a lunch break and so forth. But um, you know, the theoretically that allows for 615 more samples per shift. So next, let's talk about um, our Malik 3 extracts. So this is a soils analysis. Um, we talked specific, we specifically did Malik 3 because it's a very common extract uh, used in the Midwest. Um, but again, there's no real promulgated method for soils analysis. Uh, it's because the soil samples themselves are collected from flop farms all over the world. Um, and those can are extracted with the solution appropriate to their soil type. So, you know, what you may use, uh, you know, the West Coast would be different from what you'd use in the Midwest because you've got a different type of soil to deal with. And depending on that, uh, one extract may work better than another. Now, the goal of soils analysis um, is to compare the results uh, to a range, and that determines fertilization, fertilizer application. So um, speed is really critical here. And the reason why is that uh, there's only a certain time of year where you can apply the fertilizer, and farmers have to have a quick turn so they can get that done while the conditions are right. The weather has to be right, it has to be the right time of year. Um, and the soil labs know that they're gonna get a big surge during their busy season. There's a local lab here that receives anywhere from 10 to 30 soil, or 10 to 30,000 sam soil samples a day. That's every day, 10 to 30,000 samples during their busy season. Uh, so that lab, they know when they're gonna get hit, they hire extra workers, um, they fire up all of their ICPs, during their slow season, they may, may only run four or six of them. Um, when they get to their busy season, they get every single one of them running. They've got a whole room full of them. And, uh, and that's because they know that the turnaround time on this is absolutely critical. So what do we do for our instrument settings here? We didn't change too much. Um, the soils method, uh, from the very beginning, it doesn't have any rinse built in. It doesn't have any flush time. It just had a, a fairly high pump speed there and a read delay of 20 seconds, which leaves about 10 seconds for the analysis time. Um, we did everything, all of our work here with two replicates. It's actually atypical. Normally with soils work, you do only a single replicate, but for the sake of an application uh, note, being able to verify our data looks good, we went ahead and did a second replicate. With the uh, AS Express Plus, we're able to reduce that read delay down to eight seconds. Um, which resulted in a time savings per sample of a 30%. So we were able to take off uh, just shy of 10 seconds. We did look at also do some testing with a single replicate. And if you move it down to one replicate, that takes off a couple more seconds. And you're able to get under 20, sample, 20 seconds of sample, which is essentially three samples a minute. Um, so it, it can make a big difference. And for these laboratories that are running so many samples a day, they know exactly how many extra samples they'll get for every second they remove from their analysis. Um, so being able to tell them that you can give them an extra 50% sample throughput, that's gonna be huge. Uh, we see a 47% decrease in non-analysis time and an extra 431 samples per eight hour shift. So with that in mind, let's look at the data because of course the most critical thing is always maintaining your data quality. So what we did here is we ran um, 240 aliquots watts uh, of a known sample. Essentially, we poured up just the, the whole auto sampler full of them. Uh, we ran it over and over and over again uh, to get percent recoveries and to look at RSD. So our average RSD across the board, um, you can see in the top right, uh, we're able to get under 2% for everything except sulfur, and that's under 25 So good RSD, especially for only having two replicates. Um, and then our percent recovery, 
is in the bottom. The big red bars there are the 10% marks. Everything falls easily within the 10%. Almost all of it falls within 5% recovery. So we're getting really good recoveries, and you can see even across that that whole time, very little to no instrument drift can be seen. So um, good recovery, and what that really means is having this extra speed, you can get more samples per day, but also more samples per calibration curve. Uh, because we want to help you be able to run for as long as possible before you have to recalibrate your instrument. Now, one of the things we did in addition to this, we actually uh, went ahead and did um, a uh, spike, a lake sediment standard reference material. So we got a standard reference material um, and we analyzed it uh, 10 times. The results are in instrument level here. There are no dilutions or extraction factors. Um, and the main point that we wanted to show is the AS Express Plus can handle a sample matrix. So as you see, even with the matrix spike here um, for a lake sediment standard, uh, we're getting good RSDs. Everything's 2% or better. And that's, again, that's with uh, just the two replicates. Now, this is one of the things I think is going to be most critical for the soils labs to look at. Um, and we ran a blank um, before and after the extracts from the previous slide. Um, and then a mid-level standard was analyzed before and after the samples. Um, what we wanted to do was try and get a sense of the, the sample carryover we were seeing from that uh, matrix spike sample. So we did this with both standard and the AS Express methodology. And you can see that the blue there is our express carryover. The orange is our standard run. And this is all in milligrams per liter. So we've got some pretty high carryover um, in our calcium, iron, aluminum, uh, but what actually really made a, was a problem for us uh, when it came to our mid-level standard, our QC check, was that the manganese result um, in the standard run increased by 12%, and the CCV, it barely passed at 109.45. So um, that's on the standard run where we didn't have any rinse time. With the express, it rinses as it analyzes. So you can improve your throughput, but you can also get the added benefit of actually rinsing between and making sure that your blanks are blanks and that your CCVs, they pass because you don't have to worry about carryover if you do happen to have a dirty sample come through right before it. So we know every second counts. Time's limited during the busy season. Labs must adapt their prep to match the local so soil conditions. The turnaround is absolutely critical. And what you really don't want to see is you don't want to have a batch of samples where you run them through and then your checks fail and you have to rerun them because that's that's the absolute least effective thing you can do. So the fact that you can get better washout, that you can improve your performance um, and better maintain it over many samples, get more samples in per calibration curve. Uh, this is what the AS Express can add for your soils analysis. We're able to reduce the uptake time by 47%, the time per sample by 30%. Over the course of an eight hour shift, our standard method would be able to run 960 samples, which is still, I mean, pretty good in a given day. But with the Express, you're able to add uh, more than 400 additional samples within that same time frame. Uh, and of course, across a 24 hour shift, if you do run 24 hours a day, uh, that multiplies by three and you're looking at almost 1300 additional samples. Now for the EPA 200.7, um, like I said, these are three kind of very different applications. Um, we're going to show some of the versatility of the Express and what it can do. So these are drinking and water and wastewater samples being run by ICP OES. Um, the QC requirements are strictly regulated. And so the labs have to try and manage uh, a high sample load while also maintaining uh, the EPA requirements. So our instrument settings. Um, there was a template included with the ICP software, and that template for EPA 200.7 um, recommends that you use the smart rinse feature. It's a great feature um, for ICP optical. You don't have a valve system because it'll automatically adjust your rinse time to ensure that you get down to a clean level before proceeding to the next, especially for labs that have to do both drinking water and wastewater. Um, it can be critical to make sure that you have enough rinse out before you proceed to the next sample. Um, for this, Standard run, you can see the settings there. Uh, 30 second read delay, 30 second flush time, smart rinse for the rinse time. Um, for the AS Express Plus, we turn off the rinse, we turn off the flush, and you're just left with a read delay of 15 seconds, which that gives you a 75% or more decrease in your non-analysis time. 
And here we can see on the right, your overall time savings of 62%. So what we did is we ran um, a batch of samples. Um, we had some lab control samples blanked, some samples from a relatively clean samples from a local stream with minimum sediment. Um, and then we also had influent that was provided by a local lab from a wastewater treatment facility, which was, of course, a dirtier matrix. Um, so the time it took for our blank sample was only 177 seconds, but with the adjustable rinse time, something clean comes in about there, 170, 180 seconds, whereas your influent will take a lot longer. So we took the average time per sample, and that's where we got this 254 seconds per sample. Um, the Ace Express Plus, we were able to run the same samples uh, in only 95 seconds, which gives us that uh, fairly impressive 62% time saving. Now, we also ran um, IPCs, the instrument performance checks were analyzed after the calibration um, and after every 10 additional samples, also at the end of the run, for a total of six uh, throughout this method. Um, the ICP value is half of the highest calibration standard. Uh, and what you see here is our RSDs on, the I on this IPC. Um, you see very good recoveries, everything under I think the very highest there is 1.3% RSD. Most of them are under 1%. So we're able to get very, very good recoveries on those. And uh, the method 200.7 requires the RSD be less than 3%, uh, which we're obviously easily meeting here. Um, now, what the RSDs are, or 200.7 does require that for four replicate integrations, um, but we know that frequently within this, the industry standard, only three replicates are run. So we use three replicates here, and even with that, uh, everything was less than 2%. Um, we also ran a uh, second source QC sample directly after the calibration curve. Uh, that's on the far left, the QCS here, and you can see the instrument QC recoveries. Um, so the QCS is required to be within 5%, and everything's passing there. The IPC recoveries are also, are they're all within 10%, um, and again, many of them you can see still fall within the 5%. Everything's within 10 is required by the methodology. Now, we also ran some samples that were digested, um, and these are NIST certified standards that we ran 1640A, 1643F there. Um, and the recoveries that we're able to get on these NIST standards were all within 10%. Um, so everything you know, came back really good. We're able to get really good recoveries on these. Um, the highlighted elements that you see here, those were ones where we actually were able to get really good recoveries despite having um, a very fairly low um, certified value based on our calibration curve, and we're still able to get excellent recoveries. And here we have um, our LCS, the lab control sample. Um, we also ran matrix spikes and duplicates on the stream samples, the influent samples, um, and you can see the recoveries here. For our LCS, all of our recoveries are well within the 85 to 115% required by the methodology. Um, you know, it, it, honestly, everything's between like 93 and 105. It's, it's much tighter than that in our actual data, but we're easily passing the requirement. Our matrix spikes and spike duplicates, our recoveries are all between the 70 and 130% required. Um, so they, they both meet the, the EPA requirements as set out. Um, samples were digested following EPA method 3010 and spiked uh, with the second source at 0.2 milligrams per liter. Um, we didn't report all the elements here. Some of the elements within the, especially the influent, were already fairly high. So um, the, uh, the spike didn't come back on those. Um, but one thing that we really want to point out is we're able to get really excellent RPDs um, on both the stream spikes and the influence, um, especially. Um, with such a dirty and difficult sample like your influence to be able to get uh, RPDs where everything comes in under 5%. Uh, we're really happy with how that came out. The, the AS Express really consistently delivered the samples, handled the, and, uh, handled the complicated influent matrix very smoothly to give us good recoveries on everything. So uh, kind of to encapsulate the EPA methodology, we're working with tightly regulated high standard of performance. Frequently your sample volume is high. There's a lot of pressure on the lab to try and get more samples through to improve um, the, the lab's profitability and the price per sample is low as there's a lot of competition in the market. 
Um, so what we have to do with these laboratories, we want to set, you need to satisfy these stringent requirements. We also want to improve your workflow, right? So DS Express Plus maintains or improves that data quality. QCs, IPCs, matrix spikes, those all need to pass. And um, with the you know better washout that you can get with the valve system while you're analyzing or you're washing while you're analyzing, we can introduce the bubbles to help scrub everything out. And you can reduce your instrument drift by allowing more samples between calibrations. Um, you know, all of that will help drive to, to better uh, quality guy or quality main, maintaining your quality uh, requirements. So uh, we're able to see, you know, we meet everything the EPA needs here, but we're also able to reduce the time per sample by 62%. Um, with the standard method there, the average value that we calculated, you're only able to do about 113 samples uh, in an eight hour shift, which is you know two racks on the auto sampler. Uh, especially if you're dealing with 30 samples, you need to make sure you get clean. But with the AS Express Plus, we're able to bump that up to 303 samples uh, within the same time period, which uh, is a 2.7 times increase in the number of samples you can do in an eight hour shift. So in conclusion, the ACE Express Plus is a rapid sample introduction system. Um, it's accurate to help maintain the highest standard performance for your ICP, ICPMS, and help you meet the requirements of uh, your customers, your internal stakeholders, and uh, your EPA auditors. It's fast, helping to decrease sample, sample times by as much as 70%. It's clean and that it helps to reduce the carryover between samples by rinsing during analysis and more, so more samples per day, more samples per calibration, and there's other advantages as well uh, to this, uh, this valve system. So I know that was a lot of data, and we went through it really fast. Um, as Shelly mentioned, this webinar you can, will be able to review. Uh, we'll post it online. You can go back and look through it again. Um, what I really want to point out is we also have all, everything I've presented here will be uh, available as application notes, um, we're still finalizing the write-up on the Malik application note. That should be on the website very shortly. Uh, but the 200.7 and the mining application notes for the AS Express Plus, those are already on our website. You can access them today, um, www.teledynectax.com. And then you navigate to, it's under Resource Center, Application Notes. You can search by market, you can search by product. Um, and uh, the most recent app notes should be at the top. So I want to point that out. It's a great uh, reference resource for everyone. Um, and with that, uh, I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, now we're going to turn it over. Uh, if there are any questions, um, please submit them if you haven't already, and we'll take a few minutes here at the end to answer questions. All right, one thing that we did get in, um, will this work um, on my 520. Um, and the DS Express Plus actually was introduced um, all the way back in 2011. So it's a seasoned product that we have a lot of experience in different laboratories with. Um, so it does work on uh, the previous iteration, the 500 series, 520s, uh, works on our current 560, 280s. It also works um, on some other auto samplers like the uh, Perkinomer SPS3, or not the SPS3, sorry, that's uh, the Perkinomer S10. Um, and uh, and a few others, um, and also of course in our uh, our oils uh, auto samplers like the ASX 1400 and the new oil 7400 are all AS Express compatible. What kind of options are there for um, my valve? So we do have um, three different. Uh, valve options for the AS Express Plus for that six port valve that we offer. Um, there's two of them that are specifically designed for the aqueous marketplace that have uh, larger ID holes. And then there's actually a, a, valve, a six port valve that has smaller inner diameter holes. We use smaller sample loops as well. Um, that's for the oils marketplace um, to, we found that with the, the larger ID, we were getting a lot of cavitation with the smaller ID. We don't see that in the kerosene based solutions. Um, and then for the uh, waters or aqueous samples, um, we have a six-port valve 
and we also have a seven port valve. Uh, the advantage of the seven port valve is that it tees in uh, your internal standard directly into the valve, so you don't have to have an additional T between your valve and your nebulizer, um, and that can help uh, stabilize your internal standard with the valve movements, but also it helps to reduce um, the travel distance between the nebulizer and the valve, which is the most critical uh, time frame, or most uh, has the biggest effect on your time for sample. Okay. All right. I think there is a, there are a couple other questions here um, that are fairly application specific. So um, I'm going to follow up on those uh, with individuals. Um, you can please reach out to us if you have any other questions. Uh, you can contact us via our website um, or email me directly, um, Jacob Harrington at Teledyne.com. So I want to thank you again for all of your time today. Um, thanks for your questions. We appreciate your attention, uh, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.